Oh, no, wait. This one doesn't make a good noise. <laughs> well, I've always played guitar. Um, I've been in bands and stuff since I was about 10, and um, I'm a left-handed guitarist, so it's really hard to find guitars in shops that I can even play. There's normally like the same like one or two guitars, um, so I was always thinking about like modifying my own guitars and um, you know potentially making some stuff. And then a friend um, at an open mic in Croydon told me about this course in Merton uh, in South Thames College of instrument making and repair, and uh, I was like uh, really interested. Got running water from from some water barrels outside. Got a sunlight made out of a um, an old shower door. This is my lathe. I use it to make my own bridge pins sometimes. Um, and I've got a sort of a little sander. A lot of my tools are just cheap hobby tools, um, power tool wise, but they get the job done. Bandsaw, pillar drill. Um, spindle sander, this thing's a bit scary. Um, but yeah, they're all, they're all just used for sort of shaping, you know, bits of wood into various curves and stuff. Most of the time it starts with a back and side set like this that will normally be book matched. So it's sawn from one bit of wood like this and then you open it out and that's how you get the symmetrical grain like that. I use a plane to join this to, together um, to get a flat joining surface and then um, glue that down and then I use the plane again to thickness it down to the, the right thickness to get it resonating as freely as possible. So that goes up to 150. Say I was bending this into a set of guitar sides, I'd, I'd, I'd take it down to the right thickness then I'd spray, you know, spray it with water and then you kind of gently press it against this and, and eventually it starts to, you know, to take on a slight bend to it. So with a bit of practice, you can sort of um, coax it into the shape of, you know, in this case, you know, of a baritone ukulele. <laughs> yeah. My favorite bits are probably carving the fox on the heel. So all of my guitars on the heel of the neck have a little fox face in it. This is my favourite chisel. It's made of Sheffield steel, made by Sorby. I have no idea how old it is. Probably a hundred years old, for all I know. These are my Japanese pull saws. They are very scary and sharp, and they make a nice precise cut. So, um, yeah. This is one of my homemade tools. I use when I'm thicknessing the top of a guitar which is really really important that you get that right because um, that has a huge effect on the sound um, you know and how responsive the guitar is and that measures the distance between these two these two points what's this it's 3.7 and you want to try and get it even all the way across so here I can see in the middle over here it's not quite um, you know, it's a bit under. A lot of guitars are made from materials which, you know, are endangered. The way that we sort of collectively drool over these materials that are so, like stolen basically from places that we have no right to take them from. Um, I think it's really important that, I, that we change the way that we think of a precious item like a guitar. It doesn't have to be, you know, unethical and, you know. So I try to source everything either within the UK or within Europe and I try to know all of my supplies so all of the wood that I'm getting is sustainable and even when it comes to finishes and things like the nut and the saddle you know not using um, materials which are unethical so I'm just trying to yeah really make it a, sp a special guitar made of you know special materials that don't cost the earth. <laughs> Here's some kind of special wood it's bolted, which means that um, the, the tree, either when it was alive or when it had just died, has been infected by a fungus. And that creates, you can see like growth lines of the fungus and also lines where the tree has tried to sort of form a barrier to protect itself from the fungus. Um, 
and as a result you get these really awesome patterns so this is some wood from an orange tree that a friend in Valencia um, gave to me it's about rediscovering like you know the methods and the materials that we had here at our disposal before we started importing rosewood and mahoganies and ebony's you know woods that had been used you know in the, in Europe and the UK to make beautiful instruments for centuries for millennia that people aren't using now woods like laburnum sycamore um you know plain yew all of these woods were used to make lutes and you know other stringed instruments that now people just pass over because they think they're not you know they're not tone woods or they don't sound good but they they are and they're great so yeah <laughs> Hello Lucas. Hey man, how's it going? You're good, how are you? I'm alright, good to see you. Yeah. Been a while? Yeah, I'm alright, do you want to come on in? Yeah, let's go. I've been having a blast with it, man. Truly, it's rekindled my love for the instrument. That's like, so good to hear. Um, and yeah, like, you know, I've, even though I've been playing it quite a lot, like, the strings are still nice and bright. Uh, the setup is great. Just hearing yeah. all the harmonics, I think for me is what like really sets it apart. You know, it's just like you play. You know, you have a good instrument when you play the simplest thing. You know, just like two chords, and you're just happy hearing them ring out. You yeah. know, like <laughs> and it just. Yeah. I think the thing that I like the most about it is that. It has completely changed my playing as well um, because I think over the years you do adapt to your guitar and to its shortcomings yeah. but this is a completely you know suddenly I can play things that I just couldn't like before. A new, like a new canvas. You know the finger picking thing which I I've never really done because of my hand you know like I feel a lot more inspired to try and do and get better at it because because of the guitar you know I was I was quite surprised of how much input I could have as a lefty guitarist you never have any options so suddenly having someone going like what do you like is like well I don't know because I've never owned an acoustic so having that input was really great because then it made me do my own research you know and really think what do I like aesthetically, but also, you know, um, yeah, in terms of playability. Yeah, and we're talking about action and neck shapes mm -hmm. and like all that stuff. Yeah, really beautiful how simple it is, but at the same time, it lets the, the wood do the work. Yeah. You know, like yeah. Dan was amazing at finding the, the wood that had these finishes um, and you can just enjoy the natural beauty of the wood. The thing about nice handmade guitars is that they're so like expensive and, and it's for a good reason they're expensive but they're really hard for actual musicians a lot of the time to afford. In whatever way I'd like it to be that musicians you know, can play my guitars. Um, so none in particular. Dave Grohl. Dave Grohl would be nice, yeah, yeah. I'm I just thinking like he's a good, it's just it'll be too obscure. <laughs>